Howdy everyone, I'm Braden with EG4 Electronics and today we are going to talk about EG4's Grid Boss. This is a microgrid interconnect device, often shortened to MID. And if you've been digging around the solar industry, you may have seen that there are a lot of MIDs that are coming forth as they are capable of reducing the cost, complexity, and limitations of a solar system. Now, an MID is effectively a giant bus system that is controlled through software and through the power of what is known as a power control system, PCS, there's a lot of acronyms in the solar industry. Through the power of software, it is able to regulate safety at a high level and is able to reduce the amount of product and components that you would need to put in a system for it to be safe and successful. So let's go ahead and crack this open. Here on the inside, we have four smart ports from the top down, three slots for hybrid inverters. We have a breaker slot for backup versus manual bypass, which the backup of course would be tied to the output of the hybrid inverters. And then manual bypass would be a direct two critical loads from the grid, which has a panel right here that you can take off and fit with the appropriately rated grid breaker. And then of course we also here have a generator breaker slot if you want to add one of those in. Now let's go ahead and start from the top with the smart ports. We have four of those and you may be asking what is a smart port? Well smart ports have much more utility than a typical breaker as they have a relay built in that allows it to be dynamically controlled with variables on your system. And these variables allow it to have two main functions that being AC coupling and the smart loads. What is AC coupling? Well, AC coupling is the ability to put in a pre-existing solar system or a typical grid tie solar system, be it micro inverters or string inverters, onto a breaker in here and it will be powered by your hybrid inverters in the event of a grid outage. This allows your system to actually still produce solar even when the grid is down, which a typical grid tie system is not allowed to do. The MID or grid boss here in this case, handles that dynamically and allows your system to keep running smoothly. What the smart load feature does, it has two additional modes within itself, that being power shedding and load shedding. So power shedding is when you have an excess amount of power or you have parameters that you're comfortably above, say 90% on the battery and your grid is online, you're getting 10 kilowatts of solar input. I want my well pump to run. Well, if you put the power shedding feature on there, it pours the excess power above that threshold into powering that well pump so that you can go ahead and fill up your tank for the week or whatever kind of system you may have in place. Then of course we have load shedding, which is the more common feature of the two where you have your parameter set to turn off a specific load. If say, for example, you have your battery set to 70% and if the grid is down, then your load shedding feature can turn off something like your AC or turn off your EV charging in the middle of the night without you manually having to go in and flip a breaker or mess with a thermostat. Load shedding is a very, very powerful feature that can allow your system to dynamically keep itself from draining your batteries in the event of a grid outage. And within these four smart ports, they each have different ratings. We have one at 125 amp, one at 80 amp, and two that are at 60 amp. Now, you can always put a smaller breaker in there uh, if you have a smaller load or system that you are implementing into the port, but they do have some pretty high amperage ratings for all varieties of loads that you may be inputting. You know, 80 amp is going to be a pretty common one for, you know, AC coupling. If you have a critical or a auxiliary 100 amp load panel that you want to slot into, you know, 125 amp breaker, you're able to do that. And then of course, we have the 60 amps for other things such as an EV charger or AC. And skipping the hybrid inverter ports for a moment, let's talk about the backup and the non-backup terminals under here. They're both rated for 200 amps, which is only possible through the power of PCS. And effectively what you can do with that system is it say you have a load that you really don't want to run without grid power or something along those lines. You don't want to take up a smart port with that, of course. So you can use that non-backup load for something that 
simply runs when the grid does and doesn't when the grid's not there. And then of course, your backed up loads terminal is going to be what is constantly powered with everything possible uh, hooked into the grid boss, be it AC coupled power, be it the hybrid inverters, generator if you have it, and then of course the grid that you have tied in here. Then we have our hybrid inverters, three ports worth that are rated up to 90 amps. And this actually will kind of introduce us to a product known as the Flex Boss 21, which is going to be coming out with the Grid Boss. They are somewhat of companion products where the Flex Boss 21 is effectively a pumped up version of the 18K PV with all of the breakers and some such removed that you won't need as it is included with the Grid Boss. But there's so much that we could go into with the Flex Boss 21 that I'll save that for a video of itself, which you can find in the description once that video is live. The three hybrid inverter slots, of course, will support our other systems as well, our other hybrid inverters, that being the 18K PV and 12K PV as of the making of this video. All you need to do is slot in the proper breaker sizes for those, and it works just like that. And then I mentioned as well the generator port here. That is rated up to 125 amps, so you can have a pretty sizable generator on this system. If you have one that is particularly small, it may still be wise to go the charge verter route and power your batteries that way. But for those who want to put in a you know whole home backup type of generator, you now have whole home backup generator slots. And of course, last but not least, we have the grid port here for a properly rated grid breaker up to a 200 amp service. Now, there is a backup and a manual bypass port here, and what this will do is will allow you to turn off your hybrid inverter output to your system and manually back up your system with the grid, and that will allow you to, you know, say you want to do some maintenance on your uh, hybrid inverters, but you don't want your family to be without power for the next two hours while you're wiring something in. All you do is simply switch over using the manual bypass and you're running on grid power until you say otherwise. So the grid boss has all of these neat features that were either pieces of the all-in-one architecture or pieces of what you would need to do to install an existing system. But let's take a moment to kind of see what this would look like on a realistic stage. When you're implementing, say, for example, a two hybrid inverter system with a generator integration, you may end up with a wall that looks something like this. There are 11 boxes on this wall that all have various functions, whether it be a breaker or a splitter or a combiner. There are a lot of different components working here. So when you slot in a grid boss to the system, what exactly is being affected? What's being removed, replaced, or exchanged? We have a grid combiner panel and an inverter output combiner panel. Now, the grid and generator are more like splitters as you have your utility power run into this utility combiner panel. Then it splits to each of the inverters in the system, in this case two, which then goes through your inverters to your output combiner panel, which recombines the power between the two systems. And then that runs to your loads. Now the generator combiner panel simply splits that generator power into each of your inverters, which again gets combined through the inverter output combiner and run to your loads. The grid boss has all of these features included into it. You're effectively putting all of those combiners into one single bus. And that bus again is controlled through software to be able to manage all of these different paths effectively and safely. Next we have what could be considered the most critical component of a microgrid interconnect device, which is the transfer switch. Now, this is a feature somewhat built into our all-in-one inverters. Even the 6000 XP has that, while even though it's an off-grid inverter, it can switch over to grid power in the event that you know batteries run low, solar is not present. What the grid boss does is it includes that transfer switch like the 18K PV and 12K PV have to allow the grid and inverters to seamlessly switch power uh, to keep your critical loads running at all times. That again is a crucial component and by removing the manual bypass on the wall, you are saving a lot of money. In this image, the 
transfer switch on this case is actually for the manual bypass versus the backup. Again, if you're wanting to do maintenance on your system and you don't want your house and your family to be without power during that time, you'll need that transfer switch in order to, you know, do your routine firmware updates or add a battery to your system. Next, we'll take a look at the generator stuff. There is a generator breaker panel here. That's not necessary, of course. You have your generator breaker and panel all integrated in here, but you also have a feeder tap and a breaker for that. And both of those are, wouldn't you guess it, included within the grid boss's architecture. Again, this is kind of a uniform bus that everything connects to and is handled flawlessly. You no longer have to split and do kind of a circle around to get to your main load through a transfer switch. All of that's included here inside of the grid boss and its MID architecture. You also don't need the PV system disconnect anymore as all of the RSD or rapid shutdown systems are included within the grid boss itself by activating the rapid shutdown on the grid boss. All of the systems in your BESS that are EG4 will shut down automatically, even your batteries with the TRSD. All the various code for the compliances and the systems that are in the image that we just showed can be found in NEC 690, 706, and 705. So you may be asking yourself, what makes EG4's MID so special? And aside from the fact that it seems like every MID in the world is proprietary at this point, EG4's MID has all of its features and benefits driven by everyday users, be it homeowners or installers, be it people who have EG4 systems, third-party solar systems, or those who are just considering solar. Every single component of the EG4 grid boss was created by you. Because we truly believe energy generation is for everyone, and we are so excited to see what the grid boss can do for you and your solar system. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to check out the links in the description for more information on this, our other product, the FlexBoss 21, and to see what we have in store later. Make sure to subscribe for future content, like the video if you liked it, and leave a comment down below if you have any feedback, and we'll see you next time.